بسم الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الا وان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار My dear little children, we are still doing the Eid al-Adha and the best day series and today inshallah very short we are going to talk about one of the days of the 10 days which is the 10th of Dhul Hijjah and that is also known as the Eid al-Adha, the, the, the festival of the slaughtering and also in some places we call it the Qurbani Eid, the, the Eid of the Qurbani or the festival of the Qurbani. The Prophet Sallallahu called it Yawmul Hajj Al-Akbar, the greatest day of the Hajj and also he called it Yawmul Nahar, the day of the slaughtering. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, this is one of the young companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he is known as the Khadim al-Rasul, the, 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 the child who used to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at home, he used to uh, be with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, help him, Uh, run chores for him, do the things for him, take care of his needs and so on and so forth. He was from a very rich family, very famous family in Medina called Banu an najjar And although he was little and he was like you, he used to play, he used to have fun, but he was also serious about learning the religion. That's why when he saw the Prophet Sassam doing something, when he Uh, heard the Prophet saying him something, he would memorize it. And this is something that he mentioned about the Eid. He said, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, and this hadith is authentic, it's in, reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, and also other scholars reported it. He said that the, when the Prophet came to Al Madinah, he found the people in Al Madinah, meaning the Sahaba, they used to celebrate two days. They used to uh, The hadith says yal'abuna fi. They used to yal'abuna means play. May have amusement, maybe races, maybe fun things. So the Prophet Sallallahu asked them, what are these two days? They said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, these are the two days of al-jahiliyyah. Jahiliyyah in Arabic, in English it means the pre-Islamic days. Meaning before the Prophet Sallallahu came, Uh, the situation what it was before the Prophet came, it is called the, the days of the Jahiliyyah or the days of the ignorance or they also call it pre-Islamic days. So they say these are the days of the Jahiliyyah that we celebrated, we used to have fun. So the Prophet told them Allah has substituted for you with two days, two better things, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. These, as you know, we have talked about in one class that these are two of the major celebrations, the yearly celebration. As for the weekly celebration, just I want to remind you that weekly celebration, we have the Friday. Yawmul Juma is a day of Yain. And then we have these two main occasions, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. This 10th, which we are going to witness very soon, inshallah coming in three or four days, on Friday it will be this year. And this is the 1441 years after the migration of the beloved Prophet ﷺ that we are witnessing. This year it will be inshallah ta'ala on Friday, on Yawmul Jumu'ah. So on that day, two days of Eid, Friday and Yawmul Nahr or the Yawmul Adha or the Qurbani Eid. So as you can see that these days of Eid, we learn from this hadith, from this little child, that he understood that Eid is not for you and me to decide. 
Eid is decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they taught it to their children and that's how we know it in our time what the Prophet sallallahu say. This day is one of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So it is one of those days if you remember we talked about it that good deeds are more beloved to Allah, purer to Allah, better in the eyes of Allah <coughs> than good deeds that are done or the same good deeds if you do it on any other days. So that is still one of the days on top of it being the uh, the day of celebration. Then also this is one of the days of the month of Hajj because Ul Hijjah is a month of Hajj and it is also one of the days of the sacred month because Ul Hijjah is one of the sacred months. We have talked about it many times so I don't want to repeat this and also we have this very beautiful hadith about the Yawmul Adha. It is reported by Imam Abu Dawood and narrated by Abdullah ibn Qurt radiallahu anhu he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna a'zam al-ayyam عند الله تبارك وتعالى يوم النحر ثم يوم القر." He said that the Prophet ﷺ said the greatest day in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the day of the sacrifice, يوم النحر, and then after that the يوم القر, the day of the rest. The day of the rest means the eleventh of Dhul Hijjah. So now we understand from here the blessings of the next day too. We are going to talk about the 11, 12, 13th in a separate class inshallah ta'ala very soon. Then Abdullah ibn Qurt radiallahu anhu he mentions that uh, five or six camels were brought to the Prophet sallallahu and this is a miracle. The camels were competing with each other to go to the Prophet sallallahu to see who the Prophet sallallahu will choose to slaughter first. Who the Prophet ﷺ will choose to slaughter first. Many children, when they hear the word slaughter, they sometimes are afraid. They think this is not something good. Yes, yeah, slaughtering in general is not good. But whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to slaughter for the right reason, then this is ibadah. This is worshipping Allah and this is of course good. And this is of course beautiful. And inshallah we're going to talk about in one of the class is slaughtering animals during Eid al-Adha a a, 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 a a crime or is it something harsh we are going to talk about it because a lot of children ask this question inshallah ta'ala. so it is not when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do something you remember that this is from the most wise so it cannot be bad it cannot be harsh it cannot be rude it is beautiful and we have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to understand it Yamul Hajj al-Akbar or Yamul Adha is one of the busiest day also for the Hajjis who are the Hajjis? The Hajjis are those people, they go to perform Hajj in Makkah. This is the day they wake up in the morning in a place called Muzdalifa. There is a special place called Muzdalifa, you will learn about it later on inshallah. They wake up in the morning and they do usually five important things on this day. First of all, one of the things that they do is they stone the shaitan, stone the devil. This is, there's a place called Mina and there are three pillars there. One of the pillars, they stone the devil, stone the shaitan. Then they go and slaughter their animal for Hajj, not for the Udhiya, for Hajj. And then they go and shave their head and then they go to Makkah and they go around the Kaaba, which is called the Tawaf. They go around the Kaaba, the house of Allah, seven times. And then they go between the two mountains, Safa and Marwa, seven times. So seven times around the Kaaba and seven times between the two mountains Safa and Marwa and these are the five very important things that are done on this day which is this great day of Yawmul Hajj al-Akbar. As for us who are not Hajji what do we do? Of course you know that there are so many things to be done on the day of Eid especially we're going to talk about it in another small class but uh, in short, we pray of course the eighth prayer, then we slaughter the animal. We're going to talk about it separately as I mentioned. And one of the greatest thing that we do on this day of Eid, there is three type of takbir on this day. First is the general takbir at any time. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allah, Allah, Allah. Then before we, when we get ready for the Eid prayer and we are going to go to the Eid prayer when we leave the home we start the takbir of going 
takbir while going to the Eid prayer. And we continue that until the Imam comes to lead the prayer. And then the third special takbir on this day, if you remember, when we talked about the takbirs of the Eid, the class we have separately, that on this day, on after every obligatory prayer, you are also supposed to make takbir. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. All of these prayers, inshallah ta'ala. Now these are, this is the way our Prophet Sallallahu and as sahabat al-Kiram, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they used to recognize and celebrate this day. Remember, this is a day of enjoyment, day of fun, day of being happy with each other. Alhamdulillah, this year we might not be able to go many places, but at home we can enjoy with our families. We should try to engage in certain activities if possible at home so that we can enjoy each other and eat good food and uh, maybe give each other gifts, small gifts, so that we will make each other happy, inshallah ta'ala, for the sake of Allah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.